Welcome r slash nuclear revenge. Screw over your employees. Don't be too shocked when your dirty laundry starts catching up to you. So I need to keep this somewhat vague to maintain anonymity. And I wasn't there for all of it. This mostly happened to my friend, who was one of the employees screwed over. But I did what I could to help my friend get revenge. Friend of mine was employed as a barista for a coffee shop with a couple of locations. Well, the owner turned out to be a grade A scumbag. Started paying the employees with bad checks, not giving them their tips if they were paid on a credit card. Obviously he couldn't steal their cash tips, not that he didn't try, things along those lines. He was, of course, stealing from the business to fund his own lavish lifestyle. My friend was pissed and quit shortly after this nonsense started, and of course the business shortly went under. But if that's all that happened, this wouldn't fit in pro revenge. Now, my friend was out a few thousand dollars. I'm not sure exactly how much, but enough that it was a serious hit to their budget. And they weren't the only one. This creep was the classic con man, writing checks to cover the bad checks, all the delay tactics you ever see oh, the bank must have messed up, just redeposit it, and of course it comes back as a bad check a week or two later. Lots of shady stuff. But he was a good con man. All told, 8 people were getting screwed over too, I found out later, in excess of dollar sign 20k. So one afternoon, my friend is telling me this story, how he's so sick and tired of being conned by this creep, as well as everyone else. And here is where the pro revenge part begins to come into effect. I start digging into the business owner, all public record stuff, and some of it, are learned from my friend, or their coworkers but started to learn a lot about this scumbag. He's got multiple felonies in his past. I'm all for giving people a second chance, but this guy wasn't that old and had racked up easily a half dozen felonies. Why he wasn't still in jail is a topic for a much different forum. One of his convictions was for being a felon in possession of a firearm. He was currently on probation for the above conviction. This is where things start getting interesting. A little more light digging, and I come up with the name of his probation officer. When I sat and talked to my friend about what I had found out about his prior employer, two cycles of bounced checks was enough. He happened to mention that he had seen firearms in his apartment. They'd hung out together socially before things went completely pear-shaped. He'd used his girlfriend to purchase firearms, since he was a prohibited person. Straw purchase, yet another felony. So now as things get really interesting. I put my friend in contact with scumbag's probation officer. Turns out when you are out on probation, there's a lot of things you're not allowed to do. One of them is commit more felonies. This is an automatic revocation of your probation and will land your happy little but back in jail. Oh, and knowingly passing bad checks in our state for the amount he was writing them for is a felony in and of itself 8 employees. 3 payroll cycles, before the business officially went belly up, 23 felony counts of passing a bad check, since my buddy bailed at 2 cycles. Repeat offense of being a felon in possession of a firearm. As if that's not bad enough, when his probation officer came a knock in to check on these allegations, he also found drug paraphernalia and drugs sufficient to get him for possession of controlled substances with intent to distribute. Multiple different drugs, so multiple counts of that too. For those keeping score at home, if he was convicted of all of these counts, he would be looking at roughly an additional 30 felonies. Easily enough to keep him in jail for a very long time. Now, if this were petty revenge, that's where things would have stopped. But no. You see, the state has this fund that all employers pay a tax into. It's a fund for those situation where the company goes out of business, writes bad checks for their employees, etc. And it's administered by the state labor board. So they pay out to cover the lost wages, but not the lost tips, of the employees. But the state is not benevolent in this. Oh no. You see, in order to attempt to recoup their losses, they can seize company assets. And in the case of a poorly set up company with no separation of assets between the company and the owner, they can also seize personal assets. Oh yes. That shiny new company truck. That you're towing your shiny new boat with. Guess what scumbag. They now belong to the state. Your bank accounts. 
Yeah, those belong to the state now too. Now surely, you must be thinking, surely this is now pro-revenge, right? Oh no. You see, this scumbag messed with my friend. And I don't take kindly to that kind of nonsense. You see, my friend learned throughout this process that on top of all this, his former employer was committing tax fraud slash evasion. As far as the employees were concerned, they were all straight up W4 employees, meaning he was withholding the correct taxes, payroll taxes, Medicare taxes, etc. Except he was reporting to the eyes that all of his employees were independent contractors. And wasn't actually withholding any taxes at all. Taxes for the company? He was fudging those so badly they should have been sold as brownies. Unfortunately for scumbag. A friend of a friend happened to work for the local eyes office. And after sitting with him over drinks one evening. Found out that the eyes has a tip line for reporting tax evasion. And depending on how it's reported. Well. Turns out that the person reporting the tax evasion may actually get a small percentage as a reward for turning in the tax cheat. So on top of facing 30 some odd felony charges, on top of having all his personal and company assets seized, scumbag now has the eyes chasing after him. That, dear readers, is pro-revenge. I will update this as more developments come in. I can say that, because this scumbag is such a scumbag, he is currently sitting in jail awaiting trial for domestic assault on his girlfriend. My friend and his co-workers have been interviewed by local police and the probation officer, as well as the eyes and the ATF, for the straw purchases of the firearms through his girlfriend. My understanding is she's made a deal with the ATF to avoid charges for the straw purchases in exchange for her testimony against him. The DA and probation officer are waiting for him to be sentenced on the domestic violence charges before they go after him for all the other stuff. That way he has to serve the sentences consecutively. As far as the federal charges, who knows when those will be filed. But my understanding is that no matter when he's charged, he'll have to serve the federal time after his state prison time and won't get any credit for time served in the state pen. So what I'm reading is you reported this man to two different agencies who then followed normal protocols to punish this man by the extent of the law. Am I stupid because this does not seem like pro-revenge or any revenge. You made a couple phone calls that lead to legal ramifications that's not pro or nuclear. That's like when someone calls the cops on a burglar like lol I called the cops who will file a police report who will help file charges who will eventually make you end up in court where you be prosecuted according to your constitutional rights hope you enjoy your 10 to 20 years severed by a prosecutor and judge Lmao Dick would get revenged on. There was more involved that I can't discuss without it being much easier to identify the individual involved. However, even in what I posted here, there was a lot of guidance that I was able to provide especially with the probation officer and the Bureau of Labor for our state, which is what ended up getting all of his assets seized, since there was absolutely no separation between personal assets and the company's assets. Having said all that, just because the revenge was easy to get rolling, I do have to opine that getting the ball rolling on over 30 felony charges, in addition to getting the eyes, also my doing, and the ATF, can't really claim that one, crawling up his ass in retaliation for a couple of grand in bad checks, towards my buddy at least, obviously there were other victims of this scumbag, has to be up there in the revenge equation. I have to give it to op. Cause yes even if he called up people he got the feeling of getting at the guy it's not like getting someone doing illegal stuff doesn't feel good when they did scummy things to other people, even if you took a little part out of it. I'm sorry Ruba Ducky 99 it's just I see this as a revenge need on someone who needed it, and op I hope your friend get paid what they are owed in the long run.